and open bar of the internet, the world's <laughs> greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple newcomers into the temple. Part of the part of the Warlock D and D audio drama, also known as Team Warlock, and now developing their own su their own fifth edition supplement with Secrets of Mist, spelled with, spelled with a Y because we because we have to pander to the surreal adventure. <laughs> the <laughs> of course in, in the red corner we have Zachary Burrell, and in the blue corner we have the man better known as Nose. Man, I would have I would have uh, brought more alcohol. I didn't realize we had a we had a pregame. Lessons learned. <laughs> I'll get caught up. I'll get caught up real fast. <laughs> so, first off, how how you doing tonight? I know I know that there was a there were some challenges when it came to scheduling. I'm good. I'm glad it's yeah. It's nice to uh, nice to be sitting down and just just chatting with you all. So, I'd like to start at the humble beginnings, as is tradition around here. Walk. I'd like you both to walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Nose, after you. Oh, uh, sure. So, I played a total of maybe an hour back in, like, the mid-2000s. It was 3rd or 3.5e. And one of my classmates had tried to introduce me. Actually, two of my classmates separately had tried to introduce me to it. And that was like, I was a lot younger. It was 3.5 or three third edition. It was just very complex. Didn't really quite know what to do with it. Fast forward to like 2015. Uh, one of my neighbors and friends said, hey, uh, we're going to play a D&D campaign in 5th edition. You want to join? And I've been playing ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided to try to start DMing in like 2017. Uh, a few one shots with some with some folks in uh, various Discord servers. Uh, and started running my own home campaign in 2019, and we're still going. We're almost done, actually. Mm -hmm. Level 20. They just got level 20. Oh, nice. So for me, I started uh, back in middle school. It was uh, late 90s, and um, I, I went over to my friend's house, and his, his dad and uh, his friends were playing, and so, of course, I'm like, what, is, what are they doing? Because they were just, you know... Talking like goblins, rolling dice. I had never had any interaction with it. And uh, he said, you know what? His dad said, you know what? Why don't you guys just make up some characters and, and come play? And so, oh, all right, cool. So uh, that was that was uh, second edition. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we started playing the next couple years. That was kind of like this. Uh, when, did, when did third edition come out? Let me look that up real fast. 2000. Yeah, so it's like we... It was like third... third we played... Like we, I had to move like right when we started playing third edition. But I continued playing with some friends, and then uh, high school I just got too busy, you know, to, to have a consistent campaign. Picked it back up in college, um, still third edition or three point five is what we played through college. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, you know, got more job focused. Um, I had a buddy a couple years ago where I'm a, I'm an actor. We're doing a show. And he said, hey, we're playing a, uh, a campaign, you know, if you want to come join us. And uh, it was 5th edition. I had, I had never played 5th edition. But uh, I said, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll try it out. And then hooked back in. And that was maybe about three years ago. Mm -hmm. So, with the, now with that in mind, is this a campaign setting that you guys had been dipping around with in in the past because you'll have to forgive my ignorance on on at least one part because obviously i have i um are you sure there do we lose you nope hello anyone hear me i, I can, can hear, hear you, you. Oh, i think we lost him 
Did you still lose me? Nope, there you are. Uh, we hear you now. With that in mind, and then nothing. Yeah. So, sorry about that. D they'll check that, chalk that up to Discord being Discord. Yeah, that's about right. Understandable. But yeah, that's pretty normal. What I was what I was about to say is I wanted to get into the origins of how Secrets of Mist um, became a thing. Was it something that developed as you started playing more D&D, &D, or was the idea for it something that you already had already had beforehand? So, um, you know, we I, I started uh, Warlock, the audio drama, uh, about a year and a half ago. And, um, you know, we, we kind of made that just with the intention of kind of combining anime and D&D &D in, this, in this fun crossover, because uh, pretty much all of us in the show are, are big fans of both. And I feel like a lot of us were playing D&D &D pretending it was anime anyway. So we were like, you know, let's make it. It started off, we were originally going to do an actual play and have it be very anime inspired. And then Claire, who plays the lead, Nova, and I were kind of talking. And I thought, you know, it'd be easier if we just, you know, to control the narrative, did it all audio drama. So that was a fun experience to dive into with none of us ever having done that ever. And uh, um, after that, we kind of, you know, I had the idea, I thought, well, we can't really build these characters exactly in D and D as it is. They, you know, they're they're all very inspired by certain D and D classes, and so I thought, you know, let's. It'd be fun to have like a supplement that we could um, kind of play these characters. If we do one shots, it would be a good. I thought a good marketing tool to kind of say, hey, you know. If you guys ever feel like doing a a, a a live one shot, you know, I could get some guests and yada yada yada. And so that kind of uh, came to fruition. Just I thought, okay, well, I need some art. I need some stuff to kind of jazz it up a little bit. And uh, started talking about it in our in our Discord. And knows who's been. I mean, you've probably been listening since the beginning, right? Yeah, pretty much. As you were you. We met through Severed Sons, the the other podcast. I'm yeah. Of. I so. I had been I'd started listening to the Sons, and I had been aware of the Warlock Project through your you know, through through you all, uh, well before you aired the uh, first episode. I think I talked about it a lot in the Discord. Yeah. yeah. But so I feel like I started talking about ideas, and <laughs> Nose was like, "Hey, I have an idea for this," and you would just drop something, and I thought, you know, uh. What are, I'll pay you to help me write this thing. <laughs> and so then that's how Nose brought, got brought on. The side hustle. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm such a broad strokes kind of person and I have ideas and I have, I have, um, you know, like the big picture in mind. And I feel like Nose, you bring that, um, more detail oriented approach to a lot of things that I feel like I would get there eventually and sloppily, <laughs> but it's like, Oh no, I'll just have nose help me. Cause he, he like can, you know, work on way more the minutia better than me. Plus you have the, all the anime knowledge, probably more than me. Uh, I don't know about more, just different. It's different. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we our Venn diagrams overlap quite a bit. But yeah, I feel like we both certainly will bring up stuff of, of that sh you know shows where it's like, oh, it's like this, and you know, I'll say I I've never seen that, and then I'll do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good balance. So, which one to use the Abbot and which one to use the Costello? Hmm. That's a really good question. That is a good question. Hey, it's, an e it's a question that's easier to answer than who's the tank. <laughs> you know, who's the tank? What's the mage? I don't know who's the priest. Yeah, well, come, come back to that. Come back to that. <laughs> let me let me think about it for a second. You <laughs> you ended up falling for one of the oldest one of the oldest jokes. Who's you know, who's on first? Yeah, who? Yeah. Well, who's what, on about, first? what about what about? What about more like uh, Zach, you're the Groucho, and I'm the Chico? Yeah, or that's, something that's, like that. Actually, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, I can work with that. <laughs> oh, 
I ended up arguing with somebody for like seven minutes about about the tank when I pulled the who's the tank gag. <laughs> I usually like being the tank. Uh, I'm pr I'm pretty f I'm pretty flexible. It's just it's just um. Depending on depending on the ge depending on the game, I will put I will put a um, I will put a stop to certain to certain builds if I if I feel that they're going to be stepping on other people's toes. Um, yeah, because I get I got in an argument a long time ago because <laughs> um, somebody wanted to learn wanted to have wish as one of their high level spells, and I said absolutely not. I mean that's fair. Is I'm not a fan of spells that. Take that um, take away narrative control. Yeah, no, I feel like wish is one of those spells. I absolutely feel like uh, it's like within the DM's power to kind of control. Well, it should be in with. Or you get the, up his monkey's pot, you know. Um, teleport is the same is the same way. I've, oh, as years passed, I I kind of lightened on it, where it's like. Okay, you can teleport, but you can only teleport safely between these key points. You can do you can do it out you can do it outside of those points, but you are play but you are gambling with your life. You know the whole thing of I, I like the like the having it having it end up in the wrong spot or right like uh, uh the the what is that called the table that you can roll the. The like mishap, mishap table, or, uh, yeah. the mishap or something of that sort. But I think that's that's sort of where the the sort of social contract comes into play with DM mm -hmm. and the players. Like for example, the my home game, I've had a lot of teleports. Very rarely has it even come up in conversation any sort of derailing issue, and I think I owe that in part to. Uh, just good role play, and you know what would my character do in this situation? It wouldn't make sense to just do this. Or hey, DM, would it make sense to do this? Mm -hmm. And then I can either say sure thing, or well, you could think about X, Y, and Z, and then usually that solves the problem. Uh, sort of building on that with wish again. Twentieth uh, level wizard in the party, he has the wish spell. He's mostly used it at this point for like uh, group heals, if anything. Uh, and then maybe one time there was something outside of the scope of you know mimicking a lower level spell that he did, other than the mass mass heal. And we actually had a good opportunity to turn that into something narrative uh, and give a cool. Uh, a cool buff for a short time. So, I mean, uh, again, it's it's depending on whether you're not you're looking at this as you know, oh, I have this so I can do whatever I want, or I have this so I have to see how, if I actually had ultimate power in my hands and I knew that it was could be devastating, how would I actually wield it? being a person of you know, good character. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, putting aside the anime flair part, part of it, um, what's the elevator pitch that you usually give to people regarding Secrets of Mist? I'm not going to lie, the anime part of it's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty big, but it, but it's also but <laughs> saying but saying you're doing 5e with an anime flair is can be very broad as well, because anime is a meat is a medium and not a genre. Well, I guess kind of you know um, when I launched it, I wasn't sure, you know, like I, I tried to keep the 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 funding bar pretty low, you know, because I I see um, you know you you can go on a Kickstarter and see projects easily making like you know, $50,000. And I was like, yeah, it's probably not going to be this project. This is so niche. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I just want kind of bare minimum, just enough to raise art for each of the, the little, um, uh, the subclasses and classes and, and kind of have enough for some items and 
yada 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 um and so i knew that we had a a decent both listener base and twitter base that kind of knows i i feel like i use twitter a lot to kind of combine anime and D D a lot with the i have a lot of fun with the spell um videos i don't know if you've seen those mm-hmm. but i'll you know find find an uh, anime moment that i can kind of liken to D D, and so i i knew that kind of going in with that thing okay well i know listeners probably would be interested because i i did a kickstarter last year to have our our audio drama drawn to manga and so i knew you know there are people that are probably gonna get notified and be the most interested are people that already kind of have an interest in warlock and so i kind of leaned into that a lot with the uh with the creation you know, of that in mind mm-hmm. so but i I, th- I think the big the big question in that is um what exactly is what exactly is the mist in secrets of mist so uh I'm, I'm sure you're a big. You've watched sh- like a decent amount of shonen, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, com- <laughs> I covered in, years ago. I covered an RPG that was solely bu- solely built around emulating shonen called Shonen Final Burst. So, uh, in the show, I was like, okay, I need, I need a a a key. I need a a a chakra. I need a um. You need the key chakra. But there's one on the, the tip force. of my brain. The the weave is what's used in uh, the Forgotten Realms setting. As so I needed least. something. I needed something that kind of can be represented in, in terms of instead of people saying uh, in the show, I needed someone to. I couldn't say I'm out of spell slots, or it's like I only have a spell slot left. You know, and it's it, narratively. You know, there's always those moments where someone's like, oh. I'm, I'm running out of energy. I can't do the things that I normally can do anymore. And so I uh I think Claire actually came up with it, uh shortening mystic energy to mist. And so that's the that's kind of the that's the universe's uh, magic energy source because they are not no one in the show is connected to the weave. It's all uh per, it's all from within. And so that's that's where that's where that came from. Yeah, sort of sort of like uh, mana, mana, however you want to yeah, pronounce yeah. that. But so much of D and D is way, magic comes yeah. from alternatives, like other than sorcerers, it's all about tapping into something else. And so I wanted to give I wanted to give it some anime flair, rather than just be super technical and say spell slots. Mm-hmm. And. To that, to that, to that particular end, uh, I had no. I, of course, one of the first things that I that I had noticed was that you're introducing three classes, one of which you put a preview on on the Kickstarter page. Funny, that's so, so outdated now. <laughs> I should send you. We should send you what we've been working on. Well, that that can that can be a thing. That can be a thing for later. Um, yeah, I'll send you that later. But. There's, but there are three, cl- there are three class, there are three classes that you're at, that you're adding in, and before it, before we get to them, I'm assuming that each of them is going to have their own subclasses. Mm-hmm. But those three, of course, are the blaster, brawler, and prodigy. Now, maybe I'm, re- maybe I'm reading into something that isn't there, but would it be safe to say that th- that this particular trinity is? Your equivalent to the warrior, rogue, mage tr- trinity that's se- that's seen throughout fantasy fiction. Essentially, you know, it's um, because in the show, the only people that can use magic are sorcerers. We kind of uh, narratively still split that up into, um, you know, different different subclasses in the show. People kind of fill different roles, um, and so yeah, that's that's um essentially kind of the 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 gist of it except for they all can cast spells you know we wanted to stick with that there's that uh 
kind of anime uh, I don't want to say trope, but like, you know, it's even even like the strong characters in a lot of anime still have some kind of magical abilities. And so we really leaned into that where they can still enhance like a, even someone that's really good at punching strong can cast haste or mage armor or uh, throw a fireball. So think of it more as uh, instead of the fighter warrior, you have the paladin instead of the rogue you have a bard and instead of the wizard you have the sorcerer essentially yeah. it's it's the same sort of balance but all sort of in this uh, gish area they're all gish it's all gish mm-hmm. but um and and truth be told gish is one of those things that has been has been pretty hard, has been pretty hard to do because you you either end up with you either end up with two elements that that don't complement each other well or you or you end up with the complete opposite. <laughs> uh, there's a phrase that a phrase that we use in the temple is Cowzilla. Originally it was Codzilla back in third edition, but um one get but one got bumped off the card at it the idea is a cleric or a warlock who knows what who knows what they're doing can be an entire party all by themselves. Uh, clerics especially, <laughs> and, and and clerics tech clerics technically speaking could count could count as gish because the whole idea is a is someone who's able to fight and ca- and cast um, relatively well. But I'd like to start with with examining the blaster, especially since that's the that's the one that I ha- that I have some outline for outline for. Now, given the given the use of missed points, would it be f- would it be fair of me to say that the way that the way it handles um, empowering spells with mist and or, and using some of the abilities with that that mist empowerment grants is not far removed from, say the say the um, I'd I'd say the say the warlock. Well, it was uh, so we kind of you know I I started off with the mist points as kind of a the alternative to sorcerer points, mm-hmm. where I I kind of had that in mind of being able to do the very similar things, but that's actually changed now. Um, every character has mist techniques. That they can do. That's um. It is that is kind of very similar to the invocations that a warlock can perform, where they uh, each. I I can't remember. I don't have the the stuff in front of my face. No, as you might remember, I, like I, it's, I, I think I, it's I've, what, I've it pulled up. What what level? Like it starts at uh, a level. You get a certain amount of um, miss techniques, and you know when you hit a certain level, you get two. You can do three. You can do four, and those right. those are kind of the the new missed points right and granted your observation that the the missed points empowering spells was very similar to warlock uh business that sort of informed the you know what we're trying out for the blaster uh and the brawler too uh actually i believe every every class is it's sort of this shared uh thing one of one of the challenges is we're basically we basically have four types of sorcerers. How do we make them each seem like a full class with subclasses rather than subclasses of a single class? Mm-hmm. Uh, but a common thread uh, that we have so far is these techniques, and the techniques will be uh, what's available will be different per class, uh, but it'll sort of be handled in the same uh, method. Uh, granted, this is still very much uh, in yeah. beta playtesting, uh, subject to change, but we're trying to hit a stride with coming up with as many uh, ways to customize uh, each class using these techniques. Yeah. So, for example, one of the techniques now, instead of having to spend missed points for doing this, you just passively have, oh, your your missed blast magic attack uh, just has double its range. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, because one one of the other things I was I was curious about since it's something that's I've I've had a fair amount of debate over when you have that sort of limited resource, especially one that's dependent on uh, on long or short rests. There is a tendency to be defensive with it, and I don't think I don't think you guys, especially if you're trying to emulate anime, want to be all that defensive. Because un because um I didn't unless I'm mistaken. Let me ch let me double. Ch yeah, I did in the PDF. I did I didn't see how I didn't see how long or short it would take to recharge missed points, whether i.e. whether it's a short or a long rest. The short versus long rest debate could be an entire series of videos, probably. <laughs> uh, you could have people talk about, oh, we should use more short rests, we should do this, X, Y, Z. I've played in campaigns that use alternate resting rules, and there, that's a whole conversation to be had for another day. Um, I want to say that the initial concept was to have them uh, for a long rest. Uh Either way, there are some techniques where maybe you do it once per short or long rest. Uh, I don't believe we have any in the techniques area that are so limited as to only be like once per day, uh, at least at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I don't. That might be I, I, that might be more reserved for like uh, class features or subclass features. But the way you describe it, it it sounds like. Um, miss techniques have gone from being something something that's on the class sheet on the sheet for the class, and instead be its own chapter in the full in the full book. Is that is that accurate, or is or is it a case where each class is going to have its list of miss techniques in that class section? Uh, I believe we are going to have each class have its own set uh, yeah there's a because there's some variation mm -hmm. a, a lot of the ones that we have available to blasters don't make any sense for uh brawlers like doubling the range of your mist blast well you can't do that if you don't have a mist blast like one of the brawler uh, ones is you can em like empower your unarmed strike with elemental energy Right. Which if, you're, like if, you're a, building, if you're building a bra a blaster, you're probably not going to have a super strong. Like your your punch probably is not going to pack very much. You're not going to want to run up to someone and make an unarmed strike. <laughs> right. You're going. You're right. Mm -hmm. But there are some that are that are kind of across the board. Like the, um, I think it was the mage armor one is, the mist wrath form is one. Yeah, uh, there's and those those could be we haven't fully decided on where they lie in the design space and what we're keeping, what we're maybe transforming into another type of feature that's available in a different method. Um we've run a few play tests with it and it's been fairly we haven't come into any sort of complicated situations with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more. Right now, it's still we're so we're like so deep in the in the beta testing of just kind of the basics of a lot of the stuff that, um, you know, I don't I I want to be there for all of them. I'm sure knows you feel the same. Kind of want to make sure that it's, you know, some of it's uh, people ask are asking a lot of questions about stuff, um, but I want to get to a point where I can say, hey. You know, take this. I'll make a Google form. You can tell me what works. You can tell me what doesn't work. You know, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to that kind of without us being there to kind of guardrail things mm -hmm. to see how things work. Yeah. Now, but yeah, right now it's still very much in the, oh, that's not working. Let's try and fix that right now. Now, obviously the blaster is essentially a blaster caster in the most literal sense. <laughs> yep. But... What sort of? I'm not gonna ask. I'm not gonna have you go through all of all of them in case there's a bunch of subclasses. But 
what sort of play styles would some of the subclasses for the blaster um, focus on? And is it is it a case where it gets its subclass right out of the gate or after a, after a couple of levels? Well, we ch we were. I think did the blaster get changed to first level as well? I'm trying to uh, remember. I know at brawler. The is. At the moment, it's not brawler. Brawler. The reason we have brawler at first level is because that way you can decide if you want to be strength or dexterity based. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the subclasses specifically lets you do a dexterity based brawler, whereas the other is very much more strength focused. Blaster, the main difference in the subclasses right now really lies solely in the combat, which is that the Blaster gets multiple attacks with their Mist Blast, uh, which stays fairly stagnant in terms of damage, whereas the Brawler's uh, Mist, or sorry, the Impact style is the other, is the subclass, where they get single big bursts, uh, or rather single big attacks. Um, there's also the burst style is a third subclass that we have work working on that's going to be sort of mid range uh, to sort of close range where they're making these sort of a uh, small area of effect attacks. I keep I always saw that when we we play test uh, so we had someone play test that in the last one and I I kept thinking of that as being very like Bakugo from My Hero, mm -hmm. very like kind of creating explosions cl uh, close to you, kind of like a you know good at uh, multiple. Mm -hmm. Right, and again, so far the main difference is in the combat, and right now it's the question of. Um, actual combat strength right now, we're not sure how they scale when compared. Still to be figured out during testing. Um, as for additional things that each subclass can do differently, uh, that are maybe not entirely combat oriented, that's still something to work on. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the brawler, um, I'm guessing I'm guessing that this is that it would that the brawler is very is very much the your close range martial character. Um, would you would you say that it leans more toward more towards fighter, more towards monk, more towards barbarian, or is it a mix of all three depending on what subclass you go with? Yeah, I, th I feel like it's a mix. Um... Because I, I feel like they're, you know, the the two we have kind of solidified right now is the barrage style, which is very, uh, which focuses more on multiple attacks. Very, um, uh, you know, we it's, keep it's, keep... it's going to be more similar to the monk. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sort of a monk subclass, whereas uh, Smash is going to be sort of more uh, paladin, I think is where a lot of the inspiration yeah. came from. Like for a, punching, a punching paladin. Punching Paladin with, like, a, a handful of uh, maneuvers that they could do, sort of passively. A, pu a, punching, pa a punching Paladin, so... So, in, so in, that, in that regards, congratulations, you've just made Kenshiro. It's an anime character. We still don't have the. We don't have. Uh, what's the. What's the. The. Uh, I, I can never remember what it is. The. 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 the his special attack is like. Quivering. Is a quivering palm. Um, yeah, his. I don't remember. Oh, what is that? Called? I don't remember what it is. Yeah. It's been a while. I, I, was, you know, the, I was bringing the, that up. Five pressure point uh, exploding heart technique. Pretty much, yeah. That's from Kill Bill. Already dead. No need. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're already but, dead. Yeah, and I've I've used that I used that joke once to make a real to make a really messed up Valentine's card. Um, <laughs> you got to be careful with that one. Wrote, well, the, well, I had I had already war everybody knows that I ha that I have a that I have a messy sen that I have a terrible sense of humor. Um, that is it said roses are red. You're already dead. Sorry, I blew up your beautiful head. <laughs> so how did it land? Um, uh, it was it was never a it was never a serious thing, anyways, because I'm the same person who gives Christmas gifts that are that are the box version of a Russian nesting doll. 
You know, you open it up and there's a smaller box and it just keeps going. <laughs> so it was par for the course with me. But I'm guessing I'm get one thing that I am cur one thing that I am curious about is would it be possible for somebody to pick for somebody to pick brawler, but focus on a ranged weapon like say a, like say a crossbow or even even firearms a la um, gungrave. I feel like if you if you went more dex based, you could still. Um, that's interesting. I'm now I'm thinking about like <laughs> gun martial arts. Well, like, gun, hmm. yeah, gun, gun, gun kata is yeah, definitely no, really good. Some, some equilibrium style. Equilibrium. I, I've been watching, you know, Trigun recently. I was say Trigun. The, when you said martial arts with with firearms, I immediately thought Trigun. I was like, mm. oh, hmm. There might be some mileage in there. No, focus. Yeah, and for, for the record, so, um, if you're not familiar with um, Gungrave, which, by the way, was des was also designed so by, it was it's aside from the fact that it for the that it is one of my gold standards when it comes to a video game making the jump into an anime. Um, although it is kind of cheating on that front because it was designed because it was designed and and written by, um. Yasuhiro Naito, the same guy behind Trigun. Mm -hmm. And just... I was like looking at his outfit right now. I'm like, yeah, that's so. Like his guns have crosses on them. The guns have crosses and having and having. And a he has cross. a massive. Yeah. Well, at at the risk of saying too much, uh, you know, I should mention that. What is it? Uh, uh, well, the first stretch goal, which was absolutely smashed, was to have an additional fourth class, uh, the wielder. And so, yes, the br the brawler is going to be very much focused on the fisty cuffs. They're going to be the the Goku's and the uh, the, the Luffy's, Luffy. Uh, but then you have the wielder, who's going to be sort of the actual weapon user class so it would make more sense to throw someone like vash into uh the wielder class where maybe their specialty is firearm yeah yeah that's a it's like it's tricky because there are some things that i haven't introduced in the show but i'm like well maybe i have to um <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well improvisation is the mother of invention <laughs> And right, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if um. If so if somebody if somebody had, creative creatively interpreted the blasters so that they're throwing flying swords around, or um. Or even or even cho even choosing psychic as their element. Right, and that's that's. There's two two statements to follow up to that. So there's flavor is always free. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. want your blasts to be shaped like swords that you know fly at right your your enemies and you know go through them with this fiery sword shaped moat of energy, that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. As for elemental options, we've been playing around with uh, some tables. Everyone loves tables. Uh, I actually caught some of your stream earlier, uh, and we were talking about uh, uh, tables being very useful in the YouTube chat. Uh, and this is has player options, but it's also somewhat of a setting piece. Mm -hmm. So if you want a DM to properly run the setting, well, you got to include some stuff for the DM. So... Uh, have an example of a table to introduce saying, okay, well, if you're at, if your player's at this level, they can choose these later on, they have access to more elements and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, now that's for mostly balance reasons. We can revisit it if it seems like it's not a big deal later on. Uh, but the idea right now is you, the, some of the more, basic draconic elements uh acid cold fire lightning poison are the easier to wield yeah whereas something like 
the raw arcane energy of force damage is going to be more difficult. And the thing, the other thing I was, the other thing I was curious about, of course, is of course is going to be the um, prodigy, which I'm guessing, I'm guessing of the now four classes that you have, the prodigy is the skill monkey. Yeah, it's we're we're kind of, you know, that one's kind of been something we're kind of toying around with what we want it to be exactly but I, I in in its original conception i had it as a bit of a crowd control area of effect uh kind of can midfield you know have have both access to like blasting abilities and some brawler abilities um and yeah we were talking about that the other day of, of maybe kind of you know get, get some for example the ability to have um, miss techniques, maybe maybe that are from other classes, or um, you know, allowing it to kind of still be its. We're we're trying to find the balance of letting it be its own thing without it feeling like it's just half of a bunch of other like the other two classes, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Is, but yeah, if, I'm sorry. I sup, I sup. Maybe, maybe you guys are already thinking on this, but I suppose one approach you can you can take with the, uh, with the prodigy is that they is that they are able to, they are able to weaponize the weaponize D and D's skill system using missed points. Oh, uh, because can you elaborate? Like the like checks and stuff like with yeah with che with checks with 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 skill checks is what is one is one means but also just being able to be, being able to add effects into into regular skill checks that uh, that the others couldn't because again the idea I, when you when I look when I look at the concept of prodigy in that tr in that trinity that I mentioned before of warrior rogue and mage. Um, uh, the the approach that I end up seeing is is either a using using um missed points to enhance their um skill usage, or b or b a a means to to you to utilize some to utilize um effects effects that are more that are more about manipulating the battlefield area. Like a a prodigy would be a prodigy would be the type of person who who bi who builds traps who's ar who's already planning a, a step ahead who find finds ways to cheat the turn or cheat the turn order because they pl because they set up certain actions in advance. I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'm just making something out of whole cloth, but that's 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 the vibe that I'm getting since you mentioned you guys have had some um discussions on where to where to take the prodigy. Yeah, that's kind of, that. That actually, actually, we. I'm trying to remember what, what we talked about. I can, uh, I can, I can speak to this a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, so one of the things with prodigy is what? Well, what exactly are they a prodigy at? Right. So it's like, you know, for fitting in with the setting, all of the classes are sort of really. They have sort of the same goal. Right. This is this is an action shonen themed uh, piece of media, mm -hmm. and so they're all sort of geared towards, you know, using using magic to, uh, you know, beat the baddies. Uh, prodigies, maybe it's not so much. You know, be yes, the smarts are part of it. We we had discussions about you know which characters. Uh, would already be built, or that have been introduced already, would be prodigies. There's a handful of characters. Then we are trying to say, well, what are they? Pro like, there's one character whose his whole thing is being really smart and really good with, uh, you know, predicting statistic outcomes and everything. Uh, 
Uh, and then maybe there's someone who's just really good at doing, you know, sorcerer biz. So that that sort of type of prodigy kind of fits in with sort of this stock fifth edition source, or maybe we want to look into having someone specifically do meta magic. Whereas the whole meta magic concept in the fifth edition sorcerer doesn't really match up with the air quote sorcerers, these blasters and brawlers that are introduced for this media. Uh, and then the you know the different types of sort of support characters you have support characters who can make their allies stronger and utility characters who do a lot of different things and right now it's sort of looking sort of like those three main concepts behind the prodigy could grow into the prodigy subclasses where you have someone who's really good at making their magic more powerful someone who's more uh, who's better at making their allies, uh, making sure their allies succeed at what they're doing, and one who's making sure that themselves and also their allies can do things they couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. Now, being one step ahead, that sort of, in my opinion, falls under the either the of the latter two categories where you want to make your allies succeed or you want to open uh new opportunities for yourself and your team yep now with with that in with that in mind there's a there's a few there's a few rules specific to secrets of mist that that are hinted on the kickstarter that i'd like to Get a feel for what for what they'd be leaning into. Um, the first, of course, would be beam battles. Yeah, I'm very excited to try this. So what? No, is you no you you kind of you I kind have, of uh, I have a prototype. like you proved on what I had. Yeah. So yeah, we we have a prototype where basically you can you can counter. Not counter. Counter is the wrong word. Uh, you can impose a check of sorts uh, by expending a spell slot as you would to cast a spell. Uh, using one of your spells to oppose an opponent's uh, spell or other ability or something like that would be sort of shoehorned into, you know, this has to be like an evocation or Possibly even a conjuration. Who's to say you can't? If the enemy shoots a fireball at you, you can't counter with your own flaming sphere, for example. Uh, and then give you some sort of opportunity to, you know, counter it with your own spell, uh, avoid damage for you and your party, maybe throw your enemy off balance in one way or another, and then get some sort of penalty. Uh, it's it's a bit of a gamble, and the beam struggles are usually gambles when you see them. You know, you have you know the right. iconic uh, Vegeta using his Gallic gun to try to essentially just destroy the the world in front of him as it is, mm -hmm. and then Goku saying, "All right, I need to try to use my Kamehameha to stop it, and this had better work." That sort of mm -hmm. is uh, emotion is what. We want to evoke and usually you would think that if you can turn the tide with one of these struggles by winning one of these struggles you know the penalty will have been well worth it especially if you have all your friends backing you up because mm -hmm. D, D is a team game or at least it tries to be sometimes um but then there's there's the concept of go, of go all out as a feat. Well, we that kind of has shifted uh, away from a feat. We've kind of decided to have a section of uh, in the supplement of like how to 
play your game with some kind of optional anime rules. And one of them that we worked out was, um, you know, maybe when you are like, if, you know, you, you agree to these. It's like, OK, we're going to have these this set of rules be active during this game. If you are below half your hit point total, you might have advantage on strength checks, dexterity checks, and maybe your attacks do an extra like D4 of damage. Uh, I'm just, you know, none of this is set in stone. I'm just giving some kind of uh, examples. Mm. Um, maybe you when you are knocked unconscious, and if you f- succeed on your first death saving throw you are able to be revived with, you know, a fraction of your total hit points. Kind of, you know, giving that that anime vibe to play and kind of... Noah's, I keep thinking about what you were talking about this, where it's like, you want to kind of take the guesswork away from the DM to where they don't have to try and figure stuff out or... or, or um, what's the term? Kind of keep track of things. But so kind of having these features that you can just have in your game that that is just we want to I want to make sure that they're very concrete. So where people when they use these, it's like very. um, What's the term? Uh, um, Like player. uh, ah, I'm playing it on the word. Like they're just easy to easy to kind of keep track of and use. Yeah. Ah, oh, what is the uh, anyway? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wor- words can be hard. Intuitive. Sometimes. Intuitive. <laughs> I was like, in uh, uh, intuitive. I'm guessing you are. Not, I'm guessing you are not good at Scrabble. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I'm a risk guy myself. I'd like to say I pl- I'd like to say I'm a Monopoly guy, but then I remember it every time. Uh, then I remember Monopoly kills friendships. I haven't played Monopoly in, and, <laughs> in years. Um, yeah, and J- and Jenga should be considered a form of torturing non-combatants. <laughs> Actually, although these days I'd say it's Uno that kills friendships. Yeah, Uno's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there, there's been some fights started, <laughs> but. And I'm gu- I'm guessing uh, is Heroes Determination also also um, something that got moved away from feats or is that still a feat? Um, we haven't really we haven't really quite worked on our our feats yet. That might be something that still kind of stays in there. Uh, that kind of did get combined into that anime rule rule set, but I definitely want to have some feats in there that that still are. Um, you know, we talked about with that with having keeping that kind of anime um, flair in there. Hmm. But yeah, some some stuff got moved to just this kind of anime style play anime play style section. Especially since, um, I guess one of one of the goals is that if. We don't have like a uh, like we there we have a uh, was, there's a one shot that I believe is being uh, that is going to be part of this, mm-hmm. but no no like full adventure with you know a, a manual's worth of NPCs and stat blocks and it's it's going to be I I would find it personally difficult to run a full campaign in the warlock universe and granted it's it's not a a fully complete series yet so there's a lot that i don't know i'm i'm still mostly a a consumer of uh the show i don't have all the answers like zach does who you know wrote the whole thing uh but uh and this sort of came up in uh the last time we had playtest where how well do these classes and how how well does all this fit in with you're just going to play you're going to play Curse of Strahd. You're going to play something like that. Can you throw an anime brawler in there? Right. Would it make sense with a power level? Would it make sense with a theme? And obviously 
flavor is free. But would they fit in? And, you know, having just a stock champion fighter in the group uh, in the last playtest was a good sort of way to gauge does this work? Is the fighter stronger than everyone else? Is the fighter too weak uh, in comparison? Uh, are these going to be so ridiculously overpowered that a DM is going to look at this and say, nah, I don't want you using this. Or are you going to have a DM that says, oh, this looks pretty good. Let's, yeah, go for it. Uh, we don't have a wizard. You can play the blaster instead. It'll... So, um, I forget where I'm going with this. Well, I feel like but... that's, that's, a lot, that's a why a lot of that stuff kind of got mit mitigated away from feats into more right. just like, here's how you can play... Right this so, right there we go thank you uh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so if you're so if you're playing in if you're playing in a non-warlock setting and you use a brawler but then you the the, the caveat with that is like okay well not we're not necessarily going to allow you to drop to zero and then get back up and then start wailing on uh, the boss monster like it's the season finale of insert anime here but you know that that comes along with the setting. Likewise, I don't see a reason why we couldn't have a champion fighter in the warlock setting that now can go by these anime rules. Yeah, why not? And um, there is one there is one concept I w I would ask that you that you guys consider when it comes to when it comes to the GM advice. Yeah. Sure. Because it, because well, this ends up getting used in a lot of anime. Have you ever heard of Key Show Ten Kets? I don't think so. I'm looking it up right now. Um, it is, it, it is the equiv It is not too far removed from the three act structure. It's a four act structure that use that's used in a lot of narratives all over East Asia. I just oh, I think general. I remember seeing something about that on Twitter. It's it's kind of a different, yeah. It's like the it's the more commonly used kind of narrative because we use, we're so used to the Cambellian hero's journey. This isn't necessarily the hero's journey. It's more analogous to the three act structure. Yeah, well, your rising action climax or exposition. Would it, I, I I learned it like as like a five thing, but that's like a school thing. I'm not a professional story person. Yeah, yeah, but, but like I know I have a very vague understanding of it from what i was reading about it a while ago development twist conclusion is how is I how see. it go, is how it usually works um and i'm not and i'm i I'd, I'd advise putting that in there as as something to as something so that the gm can can put as much anime flair and as much um shown an anime flair flair into the campaign as much as the players are cuz the game's a two-way street. I'm not. I'm not saying. Put, I'm not saying put that in now, but just some. Just something to consider for down the road. Well, I'm writing it down, so there's that. And it ca it can fit into game design. I mean, Miyamoto's admitted that he used that he's used it for level design in Mario. But. The now to to th to that particular end, one one thing that ends up being kind of tricky when de when dealing with um dealing with le with leaning into um and dealing with leaning into anime has to deal with the way D and D handles its equipment. Because if I if I was to run a samurai themed campaign, and I've I've um brought up this conundrum in the past, it'd be trick it'd be tricky to it'd be tricky to do and to have anybody do anything with shields because shields aren't really a thing there I mean the closest I was able to find is one style in Okinawa and that's a, and even that's a stretch yeah I even... make, yeah I don't I don't yeah I'm looking I'm just curious I'm looking up Japanese shields it's like yeah I don't think actually maybe some kind of like if anything, there's be like a something short. Yeah. 
the closest well, I, you might I, find is is some is some sort of offhand weapon, which brings in the issues of dual wielding. So I'd like to sort of counter that argument with the uh, I don't know the the boom in fantasy uh, anime and manga that I've been at least I've been noticing recently. I don't know how long this has been going on, but you have all these shows that are especially isekai uh, genre. You have you have an entire show that's the rising of shield hero. Yeah. Uh, an entire hero based solely around using shields. You have things like, um, usually the you know the really long light novel title stuff. Like there, there's this new one. Uh, uh, my unique skill makes me OP, even though I'm only at level one or something like that. Which is definitely it's it's more video game inspired, but it's still sort of that fantasy because you even have like stuff like Final Fantasy and uh, Fire Emblem that still have sort of this variety of fantastical uh, elements uh, sort of in this sort of hybridization of Eastern and Western fantasies. So I don't think it's completely out of the question to, you know, like if you if you want to have like very heavily Eastern inspired and there's like no shields for whatever reason because people don't use them, Totally fine. If you want to have shields, boom, you have shields. Um, it's one. It's one of those things. It's one of those things I often, I often bring up in to in contrast to the claim that that's off. That's often made that you can use the you can use this one fantasy game for all kinds of fantasy. When in rea when in reality, it's never that simple. Right. Right. Um, right. And, and I th I think I don't remember who said it, but uh, someone someone said to me. Uh, specifically with fifth fifth edition is really good at you know western kind of medieval fantasy and little else. People have been trying to prove that wrong for the entirety of uh, fifth edition's uh, existence. I know I it seems at least that a lot of what I'm seeing in the realm of you know actual plays and. Uh, even just fan art, there's a lot of sort of this almost Victorian skewed uh, perception of what they want in fantasy. Um, fantasy is such a broad term; it, could, it, it it's 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 everything, right? That doesn't exist. That does exist. Which is which didn't is... mean to get too philosophical with that. <laughs> that's Sorry, that's what I'm here for. That sounds a little bit too much like a Zen Cohen. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know not, if I get. Uh, I don't know. Cut out or, so, or something. I heard something. No, that that can sound like that can sound a bit like a like a Zen Cohen. Zen Cohen. Uh, Zen, um, Zen, Zen Buddhism passage passages. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that was a K O K O A N. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, the most. If I had to use the most famous example, the whole, the whole, um, is the, is the wind, is the wind moving or is the flag moving? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, but I am cur I am, a now when it comes to the page count of the, of Secrets of Mist, how big are you guys shooting for? Are you shooting for 150 pages or are you thinking you're going to be going into the 200 page range? I mean, just what, off of what we have kind of right now, because what knows you had that the that that uh the the uh, GM binder kind of you were working on, right? I feel like probably it's like with everything as of right now, it's like without even we've even added we've even formatted added images of stuff. I, I feel like it'd probably be in the lower end, depending on uh how much I want to put in, you know, I'm part of the, with the one shot is I want to make it something that's, that's digestible. You know, I don't want to have one of those one shots that becomes like a five shot. Mm. Um, but I, you know, I plan on having lots of art with it and lots of uh, maps and stuff like that. So I, I imagine it probably be on the lower hundreds. Yeah. 
I after can, after all the four yeah, is said and done. I can I can certainly, considering that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I can certainly see that. Uh, and of course, of course, of course, that's still that's still factoring in um, stretch goals that were that were met. Right. Because I mean, like you know, I did I did a lot of research on on looking at other supplements. Um. You know, and I felt like a lot of times there were supplements that kind of had so much auxiliary information in there that was just there simply to like it'd be like a page with a paragraph. I'm like, you know, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not so much concerned about, um, you know, content for content, but I feel, I feel like we do have quite a bit, um, to put in there. Mm-hmm. And I will be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that at play around here. Hey, thanks for having us. And anytime you guys see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, you know, once we get, I, I gave us till October to uh, work stuff out, and I feel like, um, I feel like a good amount of that is just going to be us fine tuning. I don't know how you feel about that nose, but I, I feel like, uh, you know, especially you've brought so many fantastic ideas into the fold with this. Uh, you like with your stop at you with your with that. <laughs> I just oh stop it you uh like no, you, I think yes, that we're oh no go ahead I was gonna say was it two days ago where you're like hyper fo hyper fixating you're like I I got so much information I have so many ideas and like what's great what's yeah. great is working with those I'm like here's my idea for a spell here's kind of what I wanted to do here's what I have in mind with it and uh he'll be like all right no that doesn't work because of this let's change this and have this and then he sends me a working version of it. And he's like, alright, let's try this next time. I'm like, great, cool, awesome. So yeah, we, you know, it's... Yeah. Because we'll have, uh... Um... Not even, not even thinking about... I didn't meant to talk about, like, items that we're gonna have in there, and, and, uh... Uh... We have, like, a... We hit the stretch goal for the, like, villain section, where I, I want to kind of, uh... Give DMs kind of, uh... Their own sorcerers that they can use to at different varying levels to kind of fight mm -hmm. uh you know have as have as their their big bad and have hit their minions you know that kind of stuff and so yeah we'll we'll make sure we i'll uh i'll send you a, an updated working copy when we get a little bit closer and you can you can check it out and we can we can talk again uh, all right i look for i certainly look forward to that Especially since, especially since it it'll mean they'll be able to better refine things, so I'm not flying as blind. Cause yeah, we'll we'll have a much uh, much more solidified <laughs> version for you. Mm -hmm. So with all with all that's uh, once again once again if once again anytime anytime you guys feel free to re to re to return the door is always open, and I do want to give a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. <laughs> but until then, on behalf of the good brothers present or not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>